Sochem. And when I explained to him that actually I didn't want to really leave Europe uh, completely, I really wanted the consortium to be international. Uh, because I was very worried that when I went to MIT, I had this vision that the people at MIT would only see MIT or only see America, and they would start something which would be very American. But I found out that uh, he was extremely pleased to make something, because of course he was a Greek, and so he was, uh, he was passionate about getting it ha things happening in Greece, he was about in Europe, and particularly to have collaborations internationally so that this World Wide Web, as I called it, could actually really be worldwide. So, in fact, my, uh, George Metakidis, uh, a good friend of Michael de Tuzas and Michael together, the, got together. And, I, and the Greeks at that point were very much uh, dominant when it came to the, pe the forces, if often behind the surface, but the strong forces getting things to happen, arranging a high-level level diplomatic dinner at which people from both sides of the Atlantic, first we involved Japan later, uh, agreed that it, the World Wide Web Consortium should be formed and that it should be an international thing. So it's nice to come back here and celebrate that uh, uh, that Greek connection across the Atlantic, even though, unfortunately, Michael de Tuzas is no, no longer with us. So that was the consortium, and the consortium really deploys standards. It de when we know how to do something, it makes sure that everybody, all the computers do it in the same way, speak the same language. And in deploying the standards, it makes new markets, and it's been quite successful, it has a good reputation as, as being a fair and open place, it also has established that when you do work with the World Wide Web Consortium, that work will be available to everybody in the world without them having to pay any royalties. The, that, that's a very important thing, which it took us a long time to, uh, for Danny White and others to lead the industry to a point where they could make that as much as they could of a guarantee. In fact, the stage was set back in 1993 by CERN when they... Uh, when CERN said that CERN would not be charging any royalties, and that was a, uh, that was a great start on the road to being a royalty-free space, and that has been an essential part of the, the growth of the web. So, well, so now here we are, and the web has grown, and the web, the web uh, yes, as George said, it has about 10 to the 11 web pages. It has as many web pages as there are neurons in your brain. But of course, the neurons in your brain, they go down every time uh, you have some wine, and the neurons and the web pages on the web, they go up every, man, every moment. There is new web pages being produced. So the, so, but if you can imagine taking the web and making a model of the web and making it the size of the brain, and if I could put it in front of you, it probably, you wouldn't recognize it. It would be a very strange shape. It would be visual science of the brain, there's cognitive science. It's made from people from different disciplines like psychology and biochemistry uh, and ge genetics and uh, ver all various science which connect to how a brain is produced and how uh, brain functions. And they're actually, they've come together, they've made cognitive science and, they've, and they're making quite a lot of progress in understanding the brain. We need the same thing for this huge thing. Very different in some ways. Different two fun fundamental ways. One is for the web, if you like, we are the little atomic things. So when a link is made, a person makes a link. They make a blog, and they refer to another blog. They're making a link. When the, somebody follows a link, it's a human being follow a link. So the nodes, if you like, are people. The web is humanity connected. It's very big. The other different thing about the web is that we didn't design the brain. We observed the brain. But the web was something we designed, and so we could redesign it, we could change it. If we discover that it should be different, we have a duty to make sure that it is the optimal. So web science is a fascinating thing, but also it's very important for us to make sure that it is stable. Well, for me, one of the most interesting things about web science that makes it different from the science, for example, of, uh, of designing glasses of water, and is that if you design a glass of water, you can design, uh, you, you can design it, and you can, uh, and you can test it. And if it works, then you can go and sell more. 
and, that's, and, you, and if people might give you feedback and say that how it could be improved, but when that, uh, but you can uh, but then immediately make a new, uh, a new better glass of water. When you're, but with the web, you design how two people, two people connect maybe, they log on to a social networking site, one person uh, offers to make a photograph available to another, or one person says another other person is their colleague, and then what happens in, on a large scale, the macro scale, is very difficult to work out from the micro scale. It's not at all obvious, and we don't really know. Like physics, for example, will, will tell you how microscopically atoms interact. And, they will all, and then you do some mathematics in physics. You use the gas laws, and that, you calculate that if the gas was really made up of lots of little balls bouncing around, and the balls were small enough, it would, it would feel like this. They were squishy. And so physicists can do that leap from the microscopic to the macroscopic in some cases, in a very small number of, ca of, of cases in, practical, in practice. And economists try to figure out, OK, if everybody works as a selfish individual and we have money, then how will the world at work, work large? And I must say I'm a bit worried about economics, because recently the world at work has been unstable. And in fact, if you think about economic, the economic system and you think about the web, of humanity, they're very, very closely connected. Pe those people communicate using the web. The people who use the web are motivated by economy. So the economics, the web in a way, is an economic system. So yes, uh, so, so as George Bittikita said, uh, there's, there's all kinds of different disciplines, psychology, maths, sociology, physics, anthropology, computer science, philosophy, and economics. Many, there's a whole list of disciplines which we need to get together, and hopefully we have got together for this, for this conference, but to find a web science. So here we are then at the, the first web science conference, and that is web science, and that is looking back. So what can we say looking forward? Well, clearly, what's first really, really important is that we realize that the future is bigger than the past. Not so, you can obviously, extrapolating from what's happened, it's clear that changes are coming faster and faster and faster. And so it w we would be stupid to imagine that the change will now slow down. So we can imagine that not only is there a lot of future, but that during the future, change will happen faster and faster. Partly the reason for that, things accelerating, is in technology, each layer is a foundation for the next one. When the telephone wires were put in so that people could talk using conventional telephones, then these copper wires were connected all over the place. Then, when people wanted to connect computers, they used the existing copper wires to start with, and they made modems which allowed two computers to connect over the existing telephone network. Then, when they got computers connecting to each other, and the internet was invented as a system for sending little packets around, then it used the existing methods of connecting computers together to send packets from one place to another, but this time with a special address like a postcard, so that when it go from computer to computer and eventually end up at the right computer where you wanted it to get to, so that two computers could communicate with each other without worrying about all the connections in between. So the internet was built on top of that. Now, when the people designed the internet, Vint Cerf and company, they designed the internet also as a foundation. They didn't make any assumptions about what it would be used for. That was very important. They didn't imagine the web, but it didn't matter. They built it so that I could invent the web, other people could invent all kinds of other things, like internet tele uh, telephony and shipping video and things like that. So, the internet is just a, a medium which allows communication between two computers. The web is a space in which we have information and in which we, which we have web applications. So, each time, the, because the internet was deployed, as I said, where the internet was already deployed, the web spread very much qu more quickly than the internet had already spread. And the internet spread very much more quickly than the telephone system.